Hi, Mantis back again. This time I'm out with my dog team and we're making bird watching. But I'll talk more about that later. Let's roll the intro. Ciao! We are Stina and Matti. We run a lifestyle company in the north of Swedish Lapland. For a living, we work as nature guys and dog mushers. This is our life, our dream and our home. You're welcome to follow us on the journey. Hey, welcome, Matis back again. And this time I'm out with my dog team. I'm close to Sark National Park. Uh, actually, I can see the gate to Sark National Park, the Rapa Valley. And I'm here with my dogs. And we are camping tonight in this tent. And out there we have swans and different kind of birds that we are going to filming and looking at and also just enjoy. So right now I'm sitting more or less in the gate to Sark National Park. I have a Skjerfe and not much over there and the Rapa Valley is coming out over there. And now I'm looking at the whooper swans or singing swans. It's mostly swans out here now. I have seen few geese and I've seen also some other uh, birds that stay on the water. they call the I think the Latin name is something like Cygnus Cygnus or something Cygnus probably I, I, I write it the Latin name I write it somewhere there can be two up to 235 centimeter between the wing tips so it's a quite big bird yep 25 to 30,000 feathers on that bird and that's the bird in the world with most feathers on. You can see sometimes that, especially when they arrive a little bit earlier, that some are white, uh, that's the older ones, and then there's a few one that's a little bit more grey. The grey one is the young ones the, from the last year. Around 1920, there was 20 couples left in Sweden. And I also heard that 1940-1950, there was uh, 50 couples left. Anyway, and uh, when they made individual count, it was 2015, it was 11,500 individuals in Sweden. So this is this is a story about the bird that actually survived, it come back. So that's a really, really nice story. The swans, they live in couples the whole life. So if one die, the other stay there. Suddenly when I was in the tent I could see that the dog react, it was something going on and then it was a French guy with snowshoes and a big backpack. I passed by him when, when I was driving with the dogs and he was in the, on his way further into the mountains. It's a lot of nice people you meet out here. 
So we had a chat about Corona and about the national park and everything. And now we continue. Now I'll feed them and tonight I will not feed them as I usually do. Usually I mix water and dry pellets and, and everything. But this time I will I will feed them with just one uh, frozen piece of uh, dog food. Mo chicken meat and beef meat. And they love it. And we're not running so long distance and I just want to do it because uh, they like it. And then later on I give them some water or some extra food also. And uh, this guy, extreme, hey, extreme, he don't eat it. So extreme. You need to help a little bit. He have always been like this. Streaming! Hey, London! Hey, you Three! Yeah! And now it's also time for dinner for me. And for m today I will have Bullens Pilsner Korb. It's canned sausage. And you just heat it up in the can and you eat it from the can. So right now I'm sitting in the tent and the bird is still making their noise out there. It's super beautiful and calm. The temperatures start dropping and it's clearing up. So I think it will be a cold night with good trails tomorrow. It's a new day and uh, I wake up too late of course, so now it's time for coffee and then I will go back home with the dogs. Cheers, morning coffee.
now it's time for me to pack up and uh, go back to Jokmok. Yeah, yeah. Here we go.